There is no Christian, even no blood that you ask that can God multiply that from thousands. All of a sudden, we are hearing you having millions, hundreds of millions. There is no Christian that will say no. The principle of the kingdom, the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith means that I believe what you have in your hand is superior to whatever I can do for myself. So I respond. When you respond, God says, then they mark you in heaven. She believes truly, then they can release what they have. When you see people that look like they have entered the realm, where things are just opening. Men and brethren, it is no chance. There is a principle. Father, we bless your name. Let's read the scripture this afternoon. Before we take our seat, First Kings chapter 17. Mm. Verse 9. Start from verse 9. Arise, get thee to Zedaphath. We belong here to Zidon and dwell there. Behold, I am commanded a widow there to sustain thee. Who is God talking to here? Elijah. Next verse. So he arose and he went to Zedaphath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the window woman was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me. I pray thee a little water in the vessel that I might drink. Next verse. And she was going, as she was going to fetch it, he called and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in my in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I might go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. Wow. Next verse. <laughs> Elijah said to her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it to me, and after that make for thee and your son. Next verse. For thus said the Lord, When it comes to kingdom principle of multiplication, along the line in your life, there must be those say the Lord. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know those say the Lord. To move from zero. To so 100 is not normal. I am not talking about growth this morning. I'm talking about exponential multiplication. I. Thus said the Lord, the barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail till the day. You sustain the reward in your hand. God said it will fail. I. Okay. Lord, what do I term what I'm about to share this afternoon? I will be brief. Just to pass a message across. So this is the story of Elijah. Genesis 26. Permit me, stand just for one minute more. Genesis 26. And there was famine in the land. Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Famine is not new. Famine will always be. And there's famine everywhere in the world. Now, especially in Nigeria. It will always be. There will always be famine. The Bible was careful to say there was famine in the time of Abraham. Now it's Isaac turned famine again. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of Gerah. Next verse. The Lord appeared to him and said, Does to know, does say the Lord, Go not down to Egypt, dwell in this land. Verse 6. And Isaac dwelt, just like God said. Verse 7. And the men of that place, go to verse 10. 11. 
I want where Isaac planted in the same land and he went forward and he grew. What verse is that? Isaac sowed in that land and received the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. Next verse. And the man works great. Can you put the man or the woman shola? This is the presence of God, angel, saying loud and clear. And went forward and grew until he became. One man and the entire nation began to envy. God bless you, you can have your seats. Aye. There are two very important keys that you must master very well when it comes to this thing we are talking about, about laws of multiplication. I am not talking about the laws on earth. I am talking about the principles of God's kingdom. Turning a zero to hero, what you call almost overnight success. God is very interesting. He told Elijah that there is a widow that I'm commanded to feed you. You will think Elijah will get to a house and he will meet a woman with bags of food. <laughs> but God called the things that be not. There were those who had bags of rice. God did not send Elijah there. He said the woman I'm commanded to sustain you. She has just one food left. You think God doesn't know when your account is almost entering zero? What many people neglect is divine strategy. I have talked about diligence. We are not lazy people. Lazy people. I have talked about knowledge. You remember? But today I am talking about multiplication by divine encounter. Or obedience to a divine instruction. Nothing in this world matches it. In the morning, the woman told her, this is the final meal and we are dying. God told Elijah to go there. If activists were there, Facebook people, Elijah will enter soup. What kind of stupid prophet is this? I wonder even what went through the mind of that woman's son who was watching a man that God told to come and collect their last plates. Is God did not give him food. It's God told him to come and collect our own. Don't you think it's like very funny? You are telling us that thus said the Lord, our food will not finish. Why don't you that thus said Lord for yourself to get yourself food? You're asking me for money, and then you are saying, if I give you money, God will bless me, my account will swell. Why don't you use that authority to say to yourself, my account swell? But you see, the ways of God are not the ways of man. Yes, sir. Raven just finished feeding Elisha, and he said, Raven is a bird that is very stingy. With bread and, and then the water, the brook dried. And God said, now change of address. Go and meet this woman. And the woman told the truth. He said, said, give me water. And I said, okay, water. Water is no, there's no problem. There's pure water. <laughs> and there's tap water. As she was going to fetch what Elijah said that, uh, also bring that food. And the woman said, sir, <laughs> water I can give. But let's be honest. This food, is the last meal, and we are dying. Elisha said, do see the Lord. So I showed you the second place. So Moses, I, I spoke about God speaking to Isaac. They were crying in the wilderness. There was no meat to eat, and the Lord spoke. And in the morning, birds were landing around the camp. There is what is called supernatural provision. Five loaves, sir, can turn to feed over 7,000 and 12 baskets left overnight. There's no system like that in the world. But in our kingdom, it's a reality. Yes, sir. Jesus said, bring. He broke it. 
The disciples said that, Lord, Mark chapter 6, John chapter 6, the same story in the two places. Said, Master, send them away to go to the uh, city to buy food. Jesus said, they don't need to go away. There is something about God. God plus anything is more than enough. He does not believe in you going to look for addition. He is the addition. When God enters the equation, the story changes. Glory to God. Jesus said, you are trying to use your brain. That you will start buying bread. He said, no. Find me somebody who has a bread there. It's enough. One jar of oil that you have is enough. One month salary. One five thousand left in the accounts. The problem is, if Elijah were to go to some other people, they would tell Elijah, this is the last man, sorry we cannot do it, and they would die with their meal. Are you following me? Yes, sir. When it comes to, because, I'm trying to restrain my voice, maybe another time we go, I would have loved to tell you stories upon stories from the side of God and from how also Satan uses Meshach anointing to promote people. I will explain to you why his song is dedicated to Satan in worship and the old world must hear it. It blows. There is a dimension that, su- that supersedes the energy of a mortal man. It is where divinity dwells. Where they make things to happen in a way that it beats logic. It beats logic. There was a singer whose song went around the world that time, but they said that he does all kinds of things with his snake at home before any song. There is a realm that when you tap into, what comes out of it beats the natural. And God demonstrated it several times in the Bible. There are two laws guiding this realm. And when you combine these two laws, in no time, you become a master on earth. Obedience to divine instruction in giving. And number two, reaching out to the poor. Job chapter 29. And I want to show you these two things. They are not what you do once in a while. The first, person, first one might even be once in a while, but when it comes to reaching out to the poor, you have to be organized about that. It has to be a regular thing. Job continued his parable and he said, listen to this guy. He was the richest man in the East. All that I was in the month past, this was when his calamity came. As the days when God preserved me. Everybody say number one, God's preservation. God's preservation. He said, when the candle shined upon my head, when by its light I walked through darkness. Others were experiencing darkness, but there's a light I possess. It guides me. Next verse. As I was in the days of my youth, Job became rich early in life because he found this secret very early. The secret of God was upon my tabernacle. Then he said, when the Almighty was here with me, when my children were about me, he married on time. When I washed my steps in butter and rubbed poor rivers of joy, rivers of oil, when I went through the gates, when I prepared my seats, then he gave the reason Start from verse 9. The princes refrained from talking, laid their hands on their mouth. Next verse. The nobles held their tongue. I think in verse 13 or so. 13. The blessing that, no, let's start from 12. Sorry. The reason for this prosperity, he gave it in verse 12. Are you following? Are you tracking with me? Yes, sir. He said the secret of God was upon me. I am not a priest, but when I arrived, priests shut up their mouth. When I smile, say, book, I cannot believe that I'm smiling. I'm a celebrity. Everybody honored me, including kings. He said I was young, yet I was in wealth. And he said there is a reason. He said 12, because this is the reason. He said I delivered the poor when they cried. And the fatherless and him that had none to help him. He said, I refuse to allow strangers on the streets. There are two legs on which kingdom prosperity they stand. 
and you cannot do one without another. In the deception of the world, they try to talk about the second one, help the poor. Most of the people talk like that, don't help any poor. They just need to attack the church. You know, I've dealt with that sufficiently. You remember? I said, should we give your tithe to God or to the poor? Why is that? Is your tithe to are debating? Give your fuel money also to the poor. Why don't you leave tight with God? Dear Stephen money, give it to the poor. Why is it that the only portion you want to give? You understand what I'm saying? When you have money, you distribute it to different things. You'll pay. If, like Tracy now, part of the money you made this year. This amazing among us. Sorry. <laughs> you know, part of the money you made it here. Part of the money, maybe you sent money to your parents. Part of the money, maybe you fix your car. Part of the money you bought these white angelic clothes. So, you are not interested in giving any of those ones to the poor. But when it comes to tithes, you are a cheat. I get what I'm saying. Yes. Here I won't get you to heaven. As a matter of a woman saw a vision. That rapture happened. Somebody was going up. And then they came back. And the angel told her in that vision that I here brought her back. <laughs> Meaning that God, first of all, made a mistake. <laughs> she was coming. The angel just, ah! She yeah. get her from, go down! <laughs> it's amazing things people claim to see in the spirit. And some will believe because they do ask questions. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, because a lot of people have not been, God has not put their eyes to see the spirit. So they, are, they fear the spirit realm. When I was second school, there was a, a sardine that came out then that they put mermaid pitch on. I even said, I queen of the coast, that nobody should eat it. We believe for a while until me and my friend got hungry one day. My friend just said, whether queen or king of the coast, <laughs> me, I will eat this one, whatever. So it's not queen of the coast that has not come to. You know, there are many things in people's hearts. One day, a pastor carried some missionaries and they were going on water. So, go and they very big, but I've said it before, go and do evangelism. And they were singing powerful praise songs. Until the pastor introduced a song, Jesus' power, super power. They were still singing. Then he said, Mommy, water power, powerless. Ah. So, you know, nobody sang again. <laughs> so, one brother said, Pastor. We are the center of our notion. <laughs> that we've been singing, traveling. My mother had no trouble. Was making no trouble. At home. That, by the time we say powerless power now, she hears. <laughs> she touches the boat. <laughs> and the pastor to keep quiet. Maybe we should keep quiet. <laughs> Whether you provoke the devil or you don't, it's coming for you. He hates you. Whether, of course, when you do things for God, you are you attract his attention more. Uh, amen. amen. So you better provoke him. But whether you do or you don't, that does it, he's not going to change his mind about you. He has never loved anybody except the people that worship him. At least till the time they go to hell. Then he begins to torment them there. Are you following me? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Aye. So Job said, because I'm trying to quickly match the to Isaiah 58. So there is a place there is a covenant on that. But let me dwell more on the first one. Obedience to a divine destruction. The Lord said to Isaac, this is why you cannot afford not to be a prayerful person as a Christian. The Lord said to, even Isaac who was about to move what you call Japa, it's not new. Isaac was about to, and God said, no. Dwell in this land. See, whether your business or your career, you must come to a point where the voice of God is the one telling you what to do. There are those who do a job they love to do. There are those, it's not only that they love what they do, they are in a place that God wants them to be. When that one happens, you have opened up for divine acceleration. I don't know why this got my attention while praying during the week that I should talk to the church about the fact that 
especially in this our time, this dimension of rapid multiplication, at least all of you, you need to experience it once or twice in your life to move up. You cannot live an ordinary life. Little, little growth. Say little, little growth about that. They make a notion. It is true, but for how long? In the kingdom, there is a grace that can be released. That God will make all grace abound towards you. That you have sufficiency in all things. You have abundance for every good work. And God demonstrated it different times. Jesus multiplied bread two times. Again, they were in the wilderness again. God was trying to say that in our kingdom, there is a technology yes, that you are in the wilderness, yet you have abundance. Yes, yes, yes. And Nigeria is in a state of wilderness now. That means the sons of the kingdom must arise and understand that there are things that you can do and that it will surprise your generation. But as we begin from story to story, let's just call this an introduction. We will go through Old and New Testament to begin to see when God got involved with men and the signs that God left behind. When God told Abraham to leave his father's house, Genesis chapter 12, the next thing, and Abraham multiplied in silver and in gold. God has not made any mistake about it, but letting his people know that abundance is one of the signatures of the kingdom. Critics can get angry, but they can't remove it from the Bible. Abundance is one of the signatures of the kingdom. The king does not visit and leave you empty handed. Can I hear amen? Amen. I, I heard a man on TV, an American, talking about a story. One of the king, I, think, I don't know whether it's this current king of Saudi or the one before, who just only developed interest in golf and found a young man in America that could play golf very well. He told them to go and use private jet to bring the guy. Just come and play golf with him for one week. He put the guy in a palatial hotel in Saudi to play golf. And when the guy, when he was three, he asked the guy, what do the guy say? Ah, I've never been in one star hotel before. Now you put me in seven star. For one week, you bought clothes, private jets, me and Lose. I sat down at the bar, I was wondering. Lose, I have not seen life before. Alone in a private jet with pilots, cooks, and all of them. The young man was wondering, what's going on here? Because a king wants to play golf. And when they were true, the king said that it's, it is in our nature in Saudi that when the guests visit the king, you must go back with a gift. So the king said, what do you want? So I was told that he said that that golf stick, a special one. But the king thought he said that a golf field club. And he said, no problem. In four weeks, the king had bought one of the best golf compound golfs in, in America in the name of this guy. And I think with a check of $50 million for the guy. The guy, he first of all died <laughs> before he came back to life to start enjoying the money. And the king said that. The king's servants were talking to him. But at least he said, no, 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 that. It's in the nature of the king. You can Google, I think I read it one time, that when the, this same king is traveling, that he goes with about, I don't know whether they said 700 people or so, and then that he has, um, there will be several planes to carry his load. Any room is going, if he's going to America, even though he's going to America, the best hotel in America is not a standard. So a crew would have gone ahead of him, they would transform that hotel to his palace. They are going to bring their rug from Saudi, bring the pet, bring cotton, bring everything. Yes, because if he sleeps on any bed sheet, nobody else must sleep on that bed sheet. It's called royalty. Yes, sir. Some are already getting like a kilo day. <laughs> Poverty is not good. It doesn't even argue that what is it? You see, there were in those days, Yoruba or also who are they might not be that, but see, some things they come with royalty. That is the truth. But we are sons of a king. Hallelujah. The Lord might not want us to just be all about changing machines and everything, but sincerely. When you are in a need, there is a king. You are not an orphan. Yeah. Jesus said, I will not leave you orphanous. That means as orphans. When a Christian begins to live as one, as one, but there is this thing about kingdom. Unfortunately, I will tell you things I've studied about. 
we are in a democratic society, so our generation don't understand kingdom. To disobey a king, there is only one law, death. But you can disobey a president. A president is not a king. A king is the constitution. It doesn't say these are laws binding the state. It calls him my town. It can ask you to leave his town. He is the king. Technically, in a real kingdom, the king owns everything, including everybody. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And do you know that in those kingdoms, they never lack. So, well, I'm not saying we should have a king in Nigeria. <laughs> we should not have a king in Nigeria. They, they say, instead of president, we have king. <laughs> we are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so even you will land on the floor, they will stretch and pull you to pass. So it's not good for us. But are, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. The thing about it in those days, there is a balance. Those kings also were the ones leading battle in those days. Yes, so if there should be war, the king will, he will die. He will, he will sacrifice like a real king for the city. Because a king must not abandon the city. They will let women and children can go, he must die there. So, in fact, they wouldn't make you a king on, in those days if you have not done anything to what their worship. So, everybody gives their loyalty. You are what being called my king. That's why I say, so they honor you. Not that a person just sit on the side and say, everybody should honor him. No. Are you following me? Yes, sir. But I'm telling you that in our kingdom, in our kingdom, why am I sharing this? Probably people watching me and those who are here, who is owner of this shop is a Christian. What's going on there? Nothing. Who is owner of this car that is a Christian? What's going on there? Nothing. If we are not going to collect bribe, if we are not going to falsify figure, in this present day, this end time, there has to be another system. The Bible said the rod of the wicked will not fall upon the lot of the righteous. In the days when people are sharing money and sharing their entire nation and sharing things, there must be a light that you possess that stands you out. Otherwise, righteous people will beg go. Because the system is bending people. It's not only here. The system is bending people. I'm bending people. I'm bending people. Whatsoever is offered to God in worship multiplies. Whatever is offered to Satan in worship multiplies. I told you something and I went with this. They call Satan, thou art the anointed cherub that covered it. Isaiah 14. That anointing is from a word called Mimshak. It is called an anointing to spread. Remember the Bible said that the gifts and the callings of God they are without repentance. That means God doesn't take by what he gives. When Satan was walking upon the stones of fire in the garden, he seemed to be able to do a stunt that other archangels could not do. I thank you. As the time Lucifer was doing that, something was given to him by God. Because also, there are scriptures that almost, that almost suggest that Satan actually was a very good worshiper. Because the Bible says your instruments are inside you. All instrumentalists play from outside. Satan plays his own from within. So there was an aura of the king that was upon him. And it's called Mimshak anointing. It's anointing to spread. That's why his name is everywhere. There are more people worshipping Satan or not than God. Many of you don't know. Out of the seven billion people on earth, the number of those who call upon the name of Jesus are not up to two billion. The anointing that spreads. When he fell, that anointing is still with him. Pornography film will spread more than any good film. It is because men of that world have tapped into some depth in Satan that believers have not delved into. Do you know there are those who sacrifice their children for money? Yet God whispers to a believer. A month salary. He has over 300 months more that will still work in the office, but he argues that one month. 
Because the king does not get involved until you prove your loyalty to him. That, sir, what you say goes. I would have loved to show you every state in the Bible. It is when the Lord asked them to bring what was in their hand. That he gave what was in his hand. It is so that you will never accuse God of partiality. Elijah could have entered that house and they could have made the same decree over the last food. Why not just say, don't say the Lord, the food will not finish and the food will multiply. What did it cost him? Was it that when the food enters his belly, the anointing doubled or what? But he was observing a divine protocol. This is the part of Christians that many saints don't like and they are not loyal to God. What some Christians are looking for is that God comes down and he pronounces Abraham's blessings on them, but they keep their own Isaac. Did you get what I just said? Yes. It is the reason why people wait forever. That's what Christians are waiting for. That one day, God will just look down. There is no Christian that does not believe what I just shared with you. Because they, all of you read the Bible, people believe. There is no Christian, even no believer that you ask that, can God multiply that from thousands? All of a sudden, we are hearing you having millions, hundreds of millions. There is no Christian that will say no. But where many people have problems, they want God to come and push that dimension on them. But Jesus said, if you are Abraham's seed, do the deeds of Abraham. The principle of the kingdom, the Bible said without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith means that I believe what you have in your hand is superior to whatever I can do for myself. So I respond. When you respond, God says, then they mark you in heaven. She believes truly, then they can release what they have. Did you get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Does it mean every month you pass your salary and give? No, that's not what I'm saying. But you must come to a time in your life that you are facing this business is low. Lord, what do I do? And you must ask with a mind that, Lord, whatever you say, I will do. It always comes in two forms. The Lord will either adjust what you are doing or ask you to make a sacrificial giving. Or the third one, they can ask you to go for more knowledge. Yes, you can actually say that. But when God speaks to you and you obey what he says, it changes your life forever. It's a change that everybody will notice instantly, not a gradual stuff. When you see people that look like they have entered the realm where things are just opening, men and brethren, it is not chance. There is a principle. For you are holy, righteous and worthy. The Bible says, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Ah, I'm going to continue from here. There's an encounter with a man of God. See, everybody. You know, I, I five everybody. I play with everybody around, and that's where I am. When we come on Sunday, don't joke with Sunday service. One service can change your life forever. When you are coming to church on Sunday, when you were, come, when you were coming to church, what were you expecting? I told you something. And I will say this. Maybe they can take it off. Even though it's not something bad, but I can say it. I won you scored again yesterday. Last week I was complaining that he scored against Chelsea. He pained me. Now he ended as an ass career for good, which I was very happy about anyway. Y yesterday. So they, they, there's no... If Arsenal should win the league, all my friends are abroad. I'm in soup with them. I've been abusing Arsenal for over 10 years. And I've been escaping with it. Every beginning of a season, I would say, that I don't know when league this season, but I know we will not win. Arsenal will not win. And I've been correct for 10 years. And I say to my friend, Arsenal fans, may the Lord not make your life like your team. It is called near success. Anyway, let's focus on the word of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I was told that the guy scored again yesterday. At Koinonia, the only goal that ended Arsenal season, at Koinonia in Manchester. Somebody just told me, I just I know this guy now. When the meeting that they came to greet all the pastors there. So he met Pastor Nat. Pastor Nat prayed for him. Then he went to meet Apostle. And I heard, actually, I heard Apostle Emma. He said, the most important thing about football is scoring goals. And he just put his hand on her one his head. And the guy knelt down. So he said, You are a footballer. He said, Go and be scoring goals. And the following next match was against Chelsea. 
and next match, and he has scored the two matches. When people suddenly, when you see something, now I don't know whether it's because of, I'm just saying that. See, there are things behind the scene. A sudden rise, a sudden manifestation. It can be your story that all of a sudden, great things are happening all around you, but there must be a point where that is coming from. I can imagine Abraham when the angel swore that day, coming down from the mountain. Abraham knew when he came back to town that things will never be the same again. Because God swore that in blessing, Abraham just knew that things would never be the same again. He was too sure. Zutalabash. What made that boy that brought the food to agree that Jesus should take his bread? He could have said that, ah, <laughs> so me, I brought food. What the elders didn't bring anything. I want to collect my own bread. I have walked this realm times without no man. I'm still walking this realm. I am telling you, these things are possible. Sometimes, God comes in form of opportunity. I can announce, which I've been announcing, that the church is trying to get a land. Some will look at their 10,000. I don't have money. The rich will do that. That woman could have made that mistake. Some will look for what is convenient. But there will be a few. When announcement is made, they will go and ask God, what do you want me to do? That is always an opportunity to open the gates. No pastor can cajole you to what I'm saying. It has to be you being inspired by God. You know your honor, this is what God wants me to do. It can make you tremble, but you know that this is what God wants you to do. And everything changes from that moment. Everything. You can ride on that wave for three, four years. Then after a while again, something, you'll be demanded to do something again. Then you rise again. It can be times 70. And ride on that for four years again. Then God tells you again. And then you note that for every new level you get to, what used to be difficult before is now a walkover. Yes. The first time God told this church to give out 10 million, our account enters zero. It looked like, Lord, how do we pay salary? We have, six, we have security men, we have people. We have police and the company that we carry go. We, we, everything looked, that was uh, some years back. But can that be a problem now? Shortly after that, they will tell me during conference that they are buying speakers. They, are, they need 30 million. I will give them without blinking an eye as they ask him. The RRMs, I am telling you. And as it's going for the church, I have observed this in my personal life because I track my life with the word of God. If there is a way I can tell everybody, front, back, and those who are watching, you are sitting there waiting for the day break will come. The break will start from you. You are the one to get up and start talking to God. What can I do that will change my life? I have one life to live. I'm not going to wait for six years waiting for God to do something. I'm going to get up, lock my door and pray and ask God that what is it? Did you get what I've just said? Remember as I was talking last week, I mentioned so you are listening to me, you have not even done a day retreat alone. You have never switched off your phone, even if it's one VG, even if you need to drink a bucket of coffee so that your eyes will be wide open. Just say that at least one night in two months or in three months, I am not sleeping. I want to talk to my maker or a what. But you roll with the problem. And I found out something about Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Whatever you do aggressively bring them into, they don't do anything about it. Have you noticed? <laughs> Ma, even when Peter, that Jesus said, come, as he began to sing, do you know that Jesus didn't do anything? Or did Peter cried and said, save me, then the Lord pulled him. Yes. Since the day he gave a man a wife that the man he asked for. And when he said, Adam, why did you eat the fruit? He said, the woman you gave me. God has mastered the lesson then. 
that I give only to those who will value what I give. It is true. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. God doesn't rush quickly to give out things. So something can be in the apostle's life. When you say, Lord, I'm tired of then God will say that, as my daughter, I've been pitying your sins, wanting to come out of it, but it's like you're okay with it. You just mention your problem to me. Lord, you know, we are broke in our family, you know. And he say, yes, I know. <laughs> Lord, you know, I need a child, you know, Lord. Say, yes, I know. So have you ever asked the question, that how long did God also keep quiet about Anna? Penina got her angry that day. She got up. She prayed the way she had never prayed. If she prayed like that three years before then, Samuel could have come. If she prayed like that three years. But this particular day, she prayed to the point that God said, hey, now that we know you are serious. Because you also need to know the value of the song we are giving you. It's a prophet to the nation. Well, we can't just give you like that. There are people trying to go to some nations. God actually wants to send them to those nations. But they don't know right now that God's hand. If you get there and adjust them, it's behaving. Start eating burger. And leave Christ alone. Or you are still a Christian, but you are just there. And God is looking at you that this guy, all Nigerians and black, for your sake, you are the one that will change that nation there. So he will need your attention so that he can spell to you your orders when you get there. So it will God that said, I will delay you. That we cannot let you go until you are pained enough to ask us, Lord, what is going on? Then God will talk. Rebecca had two children inside that until they began to, she was having stomach upset. And she went to her and God said, there are two nations in your womb. Woman, the people you are carrying are not two babies, two nations. And you need to know that the elder will serve the younger. That's why we are creating the pain. You must know. Otherwise, so you wonder why the mother was siding Jacob, the younger one? She got the information when she was pregnant. Isaac didn't know. He was supporting uh, Esau. But the mother knew the plan. Did you get what I just said now? Because in a moment of pain, she went to pray and God told her that there are two nations. They are going to form two nations. And that the joker is on the second one. So from that day, as soon as they were born, the mother started taking special care of Jacob. They thought that it was because, no, because she had an information. I don't know if I'm getting through to somebody. Is somebody hearing me? Yes, sir. Is somebody hearing me? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Jesus, your name. I think the first time we were told as a church to give a million to another ministry, church just had one million, one hundred seventy thousand or so. And I said, take the one million and give. It, it sounded somehow. But you see, we've learned that when we do that, we just start praising God. When we did, I now told the account, I said, in fact, I the remaining 177. I was proud of what Elijah did. He said, pour water on the sacrifice. Because it is easier for God when the situation is hopeless than when there's a little hope. When there's a little hope, you might take part of the glory that it looks like it was going to work before. But when it cannot work, this is why it looks like miracles are when doctors are told that there's no way. See, at that God allows you to get to your wit's end. So that when he does it, you will never say it could have happened another way. You know, you might be a Christian and just say, I will give glory to God. Did it? But inside your heart, you felt like eh, it was already coming up a little. But when everything is shut down, that was what Jesus was doing. When he said Lazarus, that love was sick. The Bible says Jesus loved Lazarus and he stayed three more days. What kind of love is that? You see, if he healed Lazarus as a sick person, the Pharisee will say that he used chloroquine before Jesus came. Nah, he was already taking drugs. That was how he healed him. So Lazarus died. They buried the guy. So Jesus said, now, see resurrection power. Did you get what I've just said now? Do you know that there is power in your hand to change your story? Somebody listening to me, there's a catapult. There is a jar of oil. There is a little meal left. There is something you possess that God will use to change you. The principle of the kingdom will not change. God will come down to you, whether it's one meal left or two, he will say, bring it. Then let me give you what I have. 
It's just a way of honoring the king. The king just likes to say that, do you love me? No, can I take what you have? Or he say, Lord, all things belong to you, including myself, self. Then he says, okay, wait till we can now show you what we have. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Divine instructions. The first one of it, hearing directly from God, the second one is an encounter with a man sent from God. You know, I've told you, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm closing with this. So I've told you before. Some of the people, she came for one of the conferences here. She's been the only one that told me that, now these are guys, now she's a, before I put it in, then she's a married woman, well married with children, and she's a, that people will write check, I've told you before, and not put any amount on it to go and collect it. Why she told me, even it shook me a little. Somebody sent her to go and bring a diamond ring. She didn't know what was inside the court. The person paid for business, I paid for her staff to go with her. And she brought the ring. The guy came with soldiers to the front of her office and put the ring. So she asked the man that, sorry, I'm not trying to poke my nose. What was, what's inside the That you will send me abroad to go and bring that. You order, you don't want it to come in the container. And the guy said, that. let me show you. Just open and say, it's a ring. That morning, baby said the ring was about 700 million. And paid her about 20 million to go and bring it. Yeah. She, interior deco, she designed it. The, I, I was telling him, sorry, but she was, Telling one northern guy, the guy was like, Beauty asked for his girlfriend. He said that was that week would be the girl's birthday. Now this lady must finish the interior. <sighs> she said, Sir, you want me to do something in five days? The interior you asked for, we are going to bring the leather skin, everything from Italy. This one, by the time they are shipping it, it will take three weeks for ship to come in. The guy said, Ship, now what are you doing? He said, You and your staff go and buy it, charter plane. Take how many number of people who enter market in Italy, buy, and they put down the money. If you want first class or anything, say, just go. What is it? Say, go tonight, spend two days there, come back, bring all the things and fix. You know, Bible says money and salary to things. Rich people don't have time for nonsense. You are shipping for three weeks. <laughs> enter play, bring everything. Pay for excess luggage, pay, bring everything in. When it was true, the guy went to the den. I don't want to mention, I'm on the top five, if you rank president, vice president, I'm on the top five in Nigeria. The guy just came, now this other guy just saw the decoration. He went to maybe number four, so the office, and said, come and see what a lady did, and brought that one. And I want to say, you, this, you did this, can I have your number? When I discovered that this girl is responsible for all the decorations in our church, I wasn't surprised. The brief moment that I met her, if I'm in the city where she is, till today, she had just opened a very massive catering store also now. Last time I was in the city where she was, with the people with me, all the food we ate on her. She just said, you are in town, right? I'm sending a machine that will bring the food. This one. And she came herself. And she says that this is my secret. He said, I sit down in my house. Once they want to do a good deal, they will call me. She said so. One of the largest churches in Nigeria, she did the interior and she's not a member. They gave me some people, they made, somebody just spoke in the ears of the pastor that there's a young girl and said she should come and she did the interior. I said, she says, sir, I don't know him. I don't know them. Imagine a church of about 20,000 people where people were lobbying for the stuff. They called me. I am not a member. I've never met the man before. The power of God can break through the politics of men. But you are going to find this thing. When a preacher shares like this, it's difficult because there is a tennis of people thinking that it is for personal gain or anything. But I'm telling you the word of God because I want to see people's life move. We are Christians. We follow the Bible, not critics. That's why we give references. The reason for reference is that go back home, open the scripture and ask yourself, are these things so? Is this how God? Was it Elisha's word? Was the woman raised? What about Moses? What about Elijah? What about the widow of that gave food to Elisha? And he said, God said, sir, she has no child. He said, about this time, let's say, you have a child. Do some men possess the ability that when they are honored, they speak a word into your life and it stands? Is this a pattern of Christianity? Yes. What about New Testament? Emphatically, it was the church that gave to Paul that Paul said that my God shall supply. It was not a scripture 
We call it scripture now. It was a declaration Paul made over the church in Philip. And he said, no other church did what you did. He said, but I tell you, my God. He said, I look at your gifts. And I said, my God will supply. Yes. Has somebody helped me today? Yes, sir. By the next time I'm seeing you, you will have moved many times where you are. Amen. I've been speaking to all the young ladies here. The Lord will use you to construct hostel, boarding houses. Amen. You will pick girls on the streets. Amen. You will school them. Amen. You will give them uniform. Amen. After a while, God will promote you that you even have your own school. Amen. In your school, there are 1,000 students and none is paying school fees. Amen. Because you are too rich to collect school fees. Amen. You are helping people. Amen. There are many of you that will buy buses. You leave them on the street to carry people. Not because you already have a business bringing you money. You are just looking for what to do to help people. I have prophesied before that many of you have filling station. You only open when there is scarcity. You don't need people's money. You let them sell well, where everybody can afford. All because you just want to be a blessing to somebody. You have a supermarket where maybe one day in a week, maybe Sunday evening, all sales there are free. You say the poor will line up from here. They will reach Ikorodu to line out your supermarket. You don't need to say rich should not come. When the rich people see the queue, they will go back. Only those who are in genuine need will follow that kind of queue. Yeah. Reverend Sam bought school back for children to go back to school. They are going to distribute in the morning, a night before, the whole of Ikosi. Commissioner of Police of Lagos, it was alerted. Then it started raining. They start to allow people to sleep inside the church. Of course, it took them because they want they needed order from the government to allow. Because if you just allow somebody that something happens, somebody in church, they will say church is there for ritual. You know the way people say about church. So they have to get authority from Lagos State Government. People are on the street, it's raining now. So the CP signed, okay, they can stay. School back. Do you know the level of power that is in the country? Are you expecting the politicians to solve the problem? Sons of the kingdom must arise. When I share about prosperity, it is not for materialism. How many clothes can you wear? And how many cars can you drive? But brother, we have a job to do. When I pray for promotion, it is because of the kingdom. When you are a principal of a school, you can bring the values of the kingdom. Satan is a step ahead of the church in every... Have you gone to body to talk to this student before? They already been molested sexually. GSS, now primary school. Now they are taking collateral and collateral, what they call it, and all those things. We minister to people and you will see where young people have gone to already. And some of the proprietors don't have a clue what is happening. When we are talking those schools, even the, the principal, they're usually shocked. When we make contact call, we make contact call in school. They come out, they have been taking things. And I imagine, believers must rise. Yes, the endless creation, special creation, people are crying, groaning, waiting for the manifestation. If you go to your state and you employ 14,000 people and you demand for money, devotion, and demand, I will begin to tell that you don't need to cheat and do something. At least I pay you well. You start putting the culture of the kingdom into people. There was one lecturer in my school. She was the only one that I examined. Nobody would cheat. She would tell you that this, I've taught you 13 topics. She said, don't read this seven. My question will be these five. And we ask you questions like, so one day she came, she finished talking with her and said, guys, with all this I have said now, do, any, do you still think somebody should cheat in my exam? He said, when I give you the question, but I will sit outside, I will see nobody. It was only a paper that everybody did without anybody cheating and everybody passed. She told us what to read. That no, said, education is not to punish people. Well, some, some lecturers with glory in 90 people wrote this exam last year, only 30 passed. You are a failure as a lecturer that you taught 90 people, only 30 caught it. Kill on do no and you are quoting it. You know, I see that a new cell will come in, you start by saying that you better, you know me. How many of you had someone there like that in your school? Where you were in school? All of you see. It's a Nigerian spirit. In some other nations, they will question you why many people fail your course. But here you are happy that you turn 90 people, only 30 pass, 60 fail. You are a failure. That's the meaning. Hallelujah. The one I was doing in my department was so arrogant. He will come with joy. First lecture with a new set, he will give his own CV. So my course, people fail it. 
He said, if you see some of your signals that are having extra, is on. <laughs> that my cause is making them to have extra. So you better understand. And fear will set in. And was always looking for the most terrible questions to ask. You look at the Bible and say, this question, does not, there's no light of God in it. <laughs> Let's rise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Is somebody blessed today? Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to employ you now to give your heart to Christ. And by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously, he has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. I accept your finished work right now, and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.